Assam is strikingly rich in folk songs, both in volume and variety. Some of these are connected with different religious cults. Some of them again are linked to various ceremonies and seasonal festivities of the folk. Some again are the outpourings of the anguished individual heart. There are also songs which center around particular historical events. It is also to be noted that there are regional differences not only from the linguistic point of view but also in respect of content and presentation. Sometimes the same song is to be discovered in different parts of the state in slightly different garb. These variations are necessarily to be distinguished and studied in order to understand variations in the folk mind. This observation was first made by eminent scholar Dr. Moheshwar Neung. Great concern is that several of these songs are in a dying condition. Therefore, it's high time to collect and preserve these rare folk songs. Hence, this is a fair attempt to keep records of these songs in their original form. The state of Assam is reckoned with interest not only for its bountiful of natural beauty but also for its cultural diversity. The cultural ethos of great Assamese communities have absorbed all the rich cultural ingredients of different communities of Assam. I personally feel that in the heart of, of the folk songs lies the essence of human civilization. Assam is a very rich state of folk songs. The entire Assamese life is preserved in these folk songs and it should be very carefully preserved and it will definitely help our future generation to a great extent. Assam is very rich in folk literature and culture. The folk songs are orally transmitted song from one generation to other generation and composed by individual or group of individual and accepted by the community. Assam is very rich in folk literature like Pihunam, Ainam, Dhainam. All these are actually folk literature which has enriched the Assamese literature. The traditional lifestyle of people of Assam, mainly the Assamese people, the other tribal people, their lifestyle are very nicely reflected in different parts of the festival and government is very much concerned. In the process of formation of a unique and composite cultural heritage of Assam, the Dimasas have been playing a major role. Like other tribes, they have unreservedly helped Assamese cultural life to bask in its present glory. This is an exceptional example which is rarely seen in societies elsewhere in India. The Dimasa Kacharis are a gay and colorful life. They have a rich, vibrant and a powerful tradition of their own. The Dimasa love songs are poetic in nature. The erotic sense is prevalent in these songs. These love songs give vent to some particular feelings and desires of the human mind otherwise repressed by prevailing social norms. These songs also depict Dimasa folk life in parts. Generally, during the festival of Busu Dima, which is the most favorite festival of Dimasas, the young minds celebrate the happiest moments with love and desire. Apart from these ballads, they have their seasonal songs, the harvesting songs, wedding songs and love songs also. This is held during the month of Magh, that is January-February. The noteworthy fact is that the songs are generally not sung 
during dance performances. Now, in case of Dimasa love songs, we have to keep in mind the uh, system of their marriage, which is bound by certain rules, where they have to marry uh, within a particular clan. The Plains Kacharis or the Boru Kacharis of Assam dwell in the districts of Kamrup and Gualpara. These people have some attractive love songs depicting love, longing and frustration of the love-lorn heart. There are some folk songs which are related to their day-to-day -day work, agriculture and fishing, weaving and other community and collective works. Occasional use of similes has artistic beauty in these songs at large. During the time of Baisagu or Bohag Bihu, these type of love songs are sung on the second day of the new year. The second day is actually known as Bhar Bihu. The youths in festive mood use flute and other traditional instruments and sing songs out of longing and frustrations of the love-lorn heart of both boys and girls. In the songs, apart from the subject, other themes like exchange of views and ideas, different experiences, memories of each and everything are also incorporated. Like the youths, the seniors remember their youthful vigor and sweet memories. In some songs, expressions of teasing with their relatives are also present. Again in some other songs, the girl advocates for offering handkerchiefs, which is known as Hangsoni Pali. Side by side with the art form of the Kherai, the traditional form also persists, but it is gradually becoming an art form of the Bodos and known as the Kharai dance, which has as many as 18 different varieties. Although secret union and secret love is indicative, the illegal union is always a customary punishment. However, the celebration of Baisagu is the most important occasion of merrymaking in the social life of the Bodo Kacharis. During the Kharai festival, which is a religious annual community festival of the tribe, the singing of ballads in tune with dance recital using traditional instruments like kam, madol, jotha, taka and sifun, that is the flute, is also found. Here, some of the ballads unfold the saga of unsuccessful love. Like the Asmis and other people, the Bodos do not have long ballads. They have only ballad fragments, but they had ancient tradition of storytelling and uh, the uh, singing of the ballads. But these traditions have become lost now, and this persists nowadays in the form of some uh, ballad fragments. Haidong Geet of the Kacharis is related to a mythical ballad, Haidong, that is recited by Sonuwal Kacharis in the worship of Batho, that is Shiva, in the month of mid air The meaning of Ha is universe. Dang means creation and Ding means songs. The ballad describes the creation of the universe with its various significant elements. Its recitation is supposed to cause the rain, which is essential in the planting season. The Haidangi generally depicts the creation of the universe, the fire, the earth, the air and the water. Thereafter, it gives a detailed description of the various gods which the Sunwal Kasari believes and then they mention every time about uh, the Khiring Raja. Khiring Raja is another name of Shiva. Generally, these songs are flavored with religious aspects and blended in ancient faith and heroic stories. The Missings are one of the important tribes of Assam, mainly living in the north bank of the mighty river Brahmaputra. They sing the Oinitom Geet during the Ligam festival. 
The meaning of oi is dearer one. The other part of the word nitom means the target to whom the song is sung. Therefore, it means the love songs. These songs are equivalent to the Asmus Bihu songs. The oi nitoms are primarily love songs that express longing for the beloved and obvious sadness at failure to secure that beloved. These are in oral form. There is no particular writer of these songs. The songs also depict nature's beauty in comparison with the individual life of male or female singer. Bihu Geet or Bihu Nam is that type of song sung on the occasion of Bihu. This festival coincides with the advent of spring celebrated from the last day of Sot, that is mid-April, till the sixth day of Baisak, but actually extending over a longer period. Actually, the festival of Bihu is preeminently a national festival to the Asmas and the songs sung therein are national to the call. They are all set to particular music and specially adapted to dancing. In them are portrayed the elementary passions of human nature as found in their native simplicity among the unsophisticated villagers of Assam who live in perpetual contact with the abiding grandeur and calm of nature. It was Shankar Deva who rejuvenated the Assamese culture and from that time he takes another sip where the all was no bit songs and, and some of the rhythmic pattern uh, entered into Bihu. And in the second place, when the, the king, Ahum king, invited Bihu to the palace, then it takes another set. Uh, and the time the Bihu song has been changed. And the third place, when British came to Assam, when tea garden started Railway started when education started, then Bihu sends and shipped into another form. They come into being in the open air freshness pervading through them. The process and appearances of external nature act and react on the emotions expressed in them. In them, naivet of expression has been combined with depth of emotion and directness of language with spontaneity of thought. So in the new songs, very often, use of some symbols and some words that are closely related with the fertility of human being and petty fields also. So one, in one side it is a related with the fertility, in the other side it is the, the mean of exchanging love and affection to the counterpart. The subtle landscape painting of Assam, the vigorous poetry of the rural Assamese youths, the singing matches, the love days of courtship or complaint in them, all remind us of the celebrated pastorals of Theocritus and Virgil. National to the core, they, of all others, afford the surest keynote to Asma's rural life, so childlike in its innocence and so grand in its simplicity. The songs of Monikwar and Fulkwar are related to ballads by the same names. Monikwar or Prince Moni is the son of Sankala Deva. Monikwar is married to Kanchan Mati. Significant of these songs are the, its tune and its composition and the narrative part, how they narrate, it is important. Full Kumar is the son of Moni Kumar and Kanchan Mati. One day, the water god takes down the prince Moni Kumar. His refusal to return to the world prompts the king to send his daughter-in-law, Kanchan Mati, down into the water to unite her with her husband. Use of many things like wooden horse, flying horse, winged horse, then uh, some magical supernatural elements which is available in the uh, romantic ballads or fairy tale. So it is the first Assamese ballad first published 
in the Sanat history of Bela. The pathetic longing to get her husband back is narrated in the songs. In the meantime, the young Fulkuor fell down in the flower garden of Ditti Malini while playing in a wooden made paki ghora that is dragon. His youthful vigor and activities are bloomed in that garden and finally shaped his marriage with Pachtuli. The whole episode of Fulkuor in that garden is clearly highlighted in this songs. Here the manner of narration is artless but phrases of comparatively modern times and names of officers of the Ahom period have been absorbed by the ballads in a significant way. The songs of Moniram Jawan are related to the historical figure of Assam history that is Moniram Borbhandar Borua. He was a diwan to the Assam Tea Company and a historian. His attempt to start a mutiny in Assam against the British rule won him the wrath of the British government. Later, he was duly executed for his anti-British campaign. The shock and helplessness of the people at his execution is being depicted through these songs. Several folk beliefs relating to the ill luck of the Asmis are also being highlighted in these songs. Moniram Dhanar Geet or Sang of Moniram Dhan is a historical ballad. It is the latest Asmis ballad. In the ballad we got, we got both sides of Moniram Dhan. Of course, the, the ballad is sympathetic to Moniram Dhan because Moniram was a unique character. He was a person with valor, courage. The diplomacy, everything was in it. In the Kolikalor Geet, the popular philosopher bemoans the evils of the present age. These include the shortened stature of man, the construction of the death-faced road, the railway, the invention of the telegraph, the passing of the potency of goddess Kamaikha, the casting of the wind of caste and race distinctions, the carnage done by war, the deviation of the course of Brahmaputra, etc. These are the dangerous feelings of the present situation, this political reality. But he proclaims that Krishna will again establish the truth and create anew the universe. The Nisukoni Geet are usually fanciful compositions but they reveal a delicacy of sentiment which is beyond the reach of literary poetry. The rhymes in them are often meaningless but just for onomatopoeic effects. The logic or sequence of ideas in the songs is of the child's. The most significant aspect of these songs is its simple poetic sensibility. The sweet appeal of these songs is enough to satisfy a child's need. The composition of the songs is marked by the choice of the words and its rhythmic sounds. Undoubtedly, these songs bear some unique features of the Assamese language and culture. These dulabis are indispensable part of Assamese folk song. These are normally meant for soothing crying children. Actually, the lullabies add some wings to the imagination of the children. The Biyanams or marriage songs seem to have been composed by women folk. An Asmi's marriage is a musical marriage and signifies the glories of the happiest moment of a woman's life. These songs depict the ideals of conjugal life with examples from mythology, thus a marriage ceremony in the Assamese society is always uh, bloomed with the, the marriage songs sung by the women in group. The delicacy and refinement of a woman's heart of the caressing tunes when the namoti or the musical leader of the gathering has to describe the beauty and grace of the bride when the latter is bathed in sanctified water, when she sits among her companions, when the bridegroom is to be greeted, when the girl is ritually offered. 
It is important that these songs not only signify every step of the social, traditional and Vedic forms of the marriage but also indicate different norms and patterns of the Asimus society. The teasing songs are generally related to marriage. These songs are sometimes almost nonsensical in the sense that they hardly have any coherence of thought. In the process of extemporization, fancy becomes wild and all kinds of things tend to get mixed up. Zodanam is the teaching song. In the later period, the marriage function, girls, particularly girls and the women folk, they recited some short songs, which is a teaching song. In that song, they teach the priest and with whom the girl has some uh, intimate uh, relation, not the, but they do not teach the mother and father of the bridegroom or the bride. Like the marriage songs, the leader of the musical party starts the process and continues to an extent amongst the people in the gathering. The enjoyment as well as the entertainment is another aspect of the songs. According to beliefs, mother smallpox, that is I or Hitola, is the root of all pox. This goddess is known as Gangashma in Andhra Pradesh, Mariamma in Tamil Nadu, Thakurani in Urissa, and Sukhjamma in Karnataka. The Ainams are based on folk beliefs. If uh, anyone in the family is attacked by the viral diseases like smallpox, chickenpox, or measles, the women folk arrange uh, some rituals to pacify Ai Gohani and to seek her blessings for recovery. Under the far influence of Devi worship or Shakti worship, the concept of Shitala Devi was conceived and she is considered as an incarnation of Durga or Mahamaya. The songs in praise of her are known as Ainams and normally sung for the relief of this disease. According to beliefs, the mother smallpox has seven sisters. In some places, they are nine in numbers, in some places, twelve. The Ainams are sung in praise of them too. They are supposed to be the existence of Durga or Mohamaya. The Ainams are considered to be the inspiration of the welfare of the patient. They also reveal the same quality of tenderness and refinement as the Bianams. Further, they are steeped in the sentiments of reverence. Less discussions have been made regarding the Dehbisharar Geets or the Dehbisharar songs. Basically, they are associated with antique rituals and depict philosophical thoughts signifying anatomy of the human body. Ordinarily speaking, these songs are nothing but the Vaishnavite songs sung by devotees known as Bhokots. Deh Bisarar Geets in Assamese may be called spiritual uh, as well as philosophical songs. Those are sung in solo by male singers with the accompaniment of tokari or bean. The sittings of the devotees are known as Purnohewa or Borhewa in their extreme form and Bhitor Hokam or Bhokot Hewa in their minder aspects. The devotees or Buragis following this secret cult render songs related to the worthlessness of the body unless it is put to a special use is a constant theme. According to this doctrine, Deha that is the body is incomplete without the mind and the influence of gurus. These songs give emphasis on this philosophy of the human body. They speak of the transitoriness of the human life, control of five senses for the attainment of final liberation, etc. They also present some concepts about the soul and the super soul, that Atma and Paramatma. The Zikirs are actually devotional and traditional songs. They are supposed to be eight score in number. The Zikirs of Azan Fokir gained popularity due to the fact that those were in holy essence 
with some admixture of Arabic words and they contain sentiments that did not seem to be much different from the popular religious songs of the time. The songs aim at the glorification of Allah or God and at the inculcation of those human attributes and graces which bring peace to the soul and establish harmony between man and man. In Assam, Zari and Jikir occupy a very important place because it has its own melody and rhythm, very much to the satisfaction of all types of people in Assam. It was in the reign of Sorgodeo Godadhar Hingha, 1681-1696 AD, that people realized the greatness of Azan Fakir's spiritual powers. The monarch became satisfied, rehabilitated the saint by granting him lands and survivors to enable him to pursue his mission with ease and comfort. Eminent scholar Dr. Satendra Nath Sharma said, The characteristics of use of simple language, homely atmosphere, regional expression, openness of thoughts, simplicity of faith, and the influence of spirituality are vibrant in the folk songs of Assam. The rhythm, thought, and language of these songs are not composed in any discipline, rather plain and open. These are really genuine expressions and primitive elemental passions of open mind of the rural people.